Uh, we always talk all the time about all these different methods by uh, controlling insects and diseases, and it uh, looks like we ought to take ownership of some of that for ourselves, right? Yeah, you know, there probably are some things that can be done yeah. this time of year, aren't there? Yeah, I mean, especially like when we're talking about apple trees, mm -hmm. you know, and from the standpoint of, of right now, sanitation is really important. I mean, that can be done right now during the winter season, picking, uh, raking up all the leaves, because I know that there's a few insects that love to overwinter down in that leafy litter and even in the soil just below the leaves. So all that exposure to the cold weather helps to kill them. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. you know, and I know that uh, raking leaves will really help control certain fungal diseases as well. Some yeah. of those foliar fungal pathogens, will they will overwinter yeah. on, those, on those leaves. So I guess raking would be a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, what about pruning? I know yeah. we, we, we recommend pruning um, this time, well, kind of in the, in the winter, once, it, once the trees are dormant, if there are any cankers or anything like that that are being yeah. seen, and that can help decrease some disease problems next right. year too. Yeah, I was, that's right, because I think somewhere about uh, February to maybe early April, as, early, as late as early April, you can prune, so. Yeah, yeah, I kind of think once the, uh, really once the trees have, have gone dormant, and mm -hmm. then as, if you know that you're going to have a couple of days without much moisture, yeah. I think that's really a good time to prune. Yeah. Um, although one thing, if we are talking about pruning and yeah. looking at, at cankers or just some dead Mm -hmm. Dead tissue on the um, Man, on the branch. It's ugly. It is ugly. Not not very sightly, unfortunately. Yeah. But when you are pruning down, you want to make sure to prune far enough down that you'll remove a lot of the inoculum that of, may yeah. may be in that canker. So you'll want to mm -hmm. be sure to go at least eight to twelve inches yeah. down. Yeah. Good. So I guess sanitation mm -hmm. can, quite a bit, quite a bit can be done with sanitation right now. What about uh, chemical treatments? Yeah, what, what do you guys do in plant pathology? What, uh, what's the usual procedure for before before the buds break next spring? Yeah, you know, I guess one thing that it really depends what what diseases you're going to be trying to control. But there, um, some dormant sprays can be fairly effective. Mm -hmm. One of the great things about these dormant season sprays is they can be selective, and there's really not as many competing organisms out there um, yeah. to take up some of those chemistries as well. Right. Um, yeah, you know, in the entomological world, um, a lot of the insects uh, can be uh, hiding in uh, bark crevices or beneath bud scales. And so um, just about before a bud break during the dormant season, it's really a, a good time to be applying uh, a um, horticultural oil spray, a highly refined oil spray, which essentially smothers the early stages of something that's crawling around or eggs or that kind of thing and so just thorough coverage with a dormant oil spray before bud break maybe a week or so before bud break and just when some of these things are getting these little critters are getting active on the the trees and the branches it's a good time to spray to kill a lot of those off and to save some uh, problems that would develop later it's important to apply a dormant oil spray well, the temperatures are somewhat warm, but not too warm. And so that time of year in February is fine. Okay. Yeah, and so one thing that, that I remember reading about uh, doing some, some dormant season sprays is if you're going to a, be applying any copper-based products mm -hmm. to control diseases such as um, oh, fire blight or maybe um, some of those others, that you want to wait to apply that at least seven days after any one of your oil mixtures. Um, yeah, okay. So, so really, you want to just make sure to wait at least at least the week before applying those right. uh, Bordeaux mixture or another copper product right, if need be. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is you also um, need to allow about two weeks between applications of um, copper products, and then if you're going to be applying some more fungicides such as those containing sulfur. Yeah, or, or, even, like or even an oil spray again. Or an oil spray, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. You want to make sure that there's enough time it's separated in between. Separated time-wise, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's so many uh, products available, right? We even have we have various right. dormant oil sprays. And then what about your fungicides? Yeah, um, there are there are fungicides that are developed to be sprayed really any time of the year. One thing, if you are going to be applying any chemistry, you want to make sure to really follow the labels that are, are on the mm -hmm. are, that exactly. are on there. Um, exactly. The label the label is the law, and so what it says on there, you need to go by. That's right. Thorough coverage <laughs> too.